Hello, this is going to be a quick video. I had a question about how to use Kawaii in counting. Um, before that, though, I think it's good to review or talk about how to count. Uh, I had thought I had made a video on this already, but I guess I didn't. Um, so maybe if you're new, and there are pros who count like this. The uh, most basic way to count is just like, uh, let's, let's say we have a box like this. And then maybe the most basic way to count is just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Right? Um, so that's like maybe your first intuition, but it's a little bit slow. So what a lot of players have been taught to do, and this was very popular, uh, at least how I was taught when I was in Japan, uh, was to count in pairs. So you say, this is a pair, this is a pair, this is a pair, this is a pair, five, six, seven, and then a half pair here. So this is a total of seven and a half pairs, <clears throat> so 15 points. The advantage of using a method like this is say there's a, ca a stone that's inside that's captured. Then we can say, oh, one, two, three, five, six, seven pairs, and an eighth pair because a, a captured stone is worth two, right? It's the point underneath and the stone. Um, so that's a very easy way to count. Uh, I personally counted like that for many, for a very long time, but I find that actually a better way to count is by counting um, spaces. Uh, at least personally I find I prefer this. So for the same space, I might see this is a three by four square and then a and then there's an extra three here so that's an easy 15. Or uh, personally another way that's really easy for me uh, is I know that four by four is 16. So this is just one less than that so this is 15. Um, this is just like a really easy way to count spaces quickly. Um, and this is actually quite common. So uh, the there's a bunch, so when I count, I have a bunch of shapes in mind that I've practiced. And probably the m most basic shape is nine plus one, three by three plus one. So if it's like this, it's 10, right? And usually you want to count in fives or tens. So you might say, oh, this shape, you know, how realistic is that? Um, but say we have this normal enclosure and two stones like this. <clears throat> the reason the shape is so useful is you always want to count the minimum territory. So if white plays the end game like this, right? We always assume our opponent plays the end game so that it's the minimum amount of space. Um, and then immediately I see, oh, there's a 10 here. And then I see there's a four over here. In my mind, I'm thinking, you could say white could play here, but in my mind, I'm thinking white's gonna play here um, as the minimum, because this seems a little bit too unrealistic in a game. And the thing is, uh, so we immediately see there's 10, and then we how do we count the other four, right? Uh, you could just see that it's four. You can see that this is a five minus one. Uh, but in my mind, I have one shape, in, or two shapes in particular that I associate with four, and that's the L, like this, or that's the uh, T shape, the three and one, like this. So this is actually our first example of Tawari and counting. We can mentally move stones to fill in the space or to make the shape easier to count. For instance, maybe you didn't see this shape. Instead, we think, oh, move this one here. Oh, and this is three by five minus one, minus the one here. So that's 14, right? Um, very, very simple. Uh, and stone moving is a type of tawari. And you just imagine that it's moving in your mind. Same way, like after you can't finish the game, you would move the stones to make the space easier to count. You can just move the stones in your mind during the game to make it easier to count, right? Pretty simple. Um, so the example I would use next, oh, I wish I had uh, put it on an empty board. <laughs> uh, sorry about the cooking. Um, so, okay, that's fine. But let me give you an example of a uh, large territory because this is where the next trick is gonna be most useful. Uh, let's say black has a large Oh, let's make it like this. A large space like this, and then white has some stones here. And to make so we assume the end we assume white plays first in the end game for counting our spaces, right? And here we're not going to use any shapes. Um, there are some shapes I probably should have mentioned before, some other shapes. 
Uh, why don't I do this really quick? So another shape that is useful uh, is the five shape. So this pressing shape um, is very common. And on the side, I usually think of this as uh, three at the beginning, but later if I end up pushing or something, right, I can see this is a five. This is a very common shape to know that this makes five. Um, and you might think, well, that doesn't, you know, okay, that's one Joseki. When does this come up again? Uh, well, what if we have a shape? Um, yeah, like this, right? This is a very standard Joseki. Ignore the stones on the right. But we've seen this Joseki before. And oh, look, this shape here again. If we push or something in the center, if I get any stone here, this can be five. Beginning of the game, I would actually count this as 10. I see this is five, another shape I know. Oh, look, there's another five. One, two, three, four, five, right? Five and five is 10. Uh, you could imagine pushing here and then moving this one stone up here too, right? You can move this stone, we imagine block pushing, we just put it here, then this is two by five, 10. Um, the nice way about this is like, you don't have, you, there's two benefits of counting in this way. One is it makes you very familiar with shapes. So you can count new shapes very quickly. And the second thing is if you remember them by shape, instead of just counting the whole board in pairs, it over time becomes easier to remember the value of every of each space, right? So this corner is 10, not like this is 10, then another 15 over here, and another three over here. Okay, I'm at uh, 28, and another five, 33. And then you forget but then you forget, like, what was this corner again? And then when this changes, you have to recount everything. Instead, if you remember the shapes, you're like, oh, this was, you know, this is 10. And the other thing, that changed, but this part still stays 10, right? So it's easier to remember. Um, okay. So uh, I should have really... Sorry. Anyway. Um, so back to the large territory. <coughs> um, here, again, I'm just going to fill in the, the border with stone. So I'll make... I'll make um, I'll put triangles on the on the border stones to show that these are not played. This is just where I'm imagining the border. And then on the inside, we want to count this. So for very large spaces, it's not very efficient to count in shapes. It's also not efficient to count in pairs. But we can just do our same Tawari trick. We can move the stones, right? I'll take this one over here, this one over here, this one over here, this one over here. And this is just all in my mind. I'm just kind of moving them in my mind. And in fact, I could count this inner rectangle and then this string of three, four, five, six points. But actually, because I see there's only two here, I'm just going to count the big rectangle and then subtract two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So 56 minus two is 54. So this whole corner is 54. And if I move the stones back, right, I can. So what's happening is in my mind, I'm moving the stones, and then I'm doing those calculations to count the space, so it's 54. Um, so that's like one form of Tawari is moving the stones, but this is probably the more useful one is what I'm gonna say next. Well, they're, they're both useful, and you need this before you do the next one. But let's say White earlier made some exchanges. White had tried to invade, I'm playing like a teaching game with a, I don't know, 10Q, 15Q or something, and they're trying to invade here. Oh, and they realize, oh, I can't save them. Well, now it's a lot harder because we have these stones inside that we need to uh, account for in our counting. And we could, oh, sorry, I dropped my uh, pen. Uh, we could move the stones around, but then we'd have to like double count the white stones and that's a pain. Instead, what we can do is we can say, well, I know that every white stone is worth one point for me. So I can actually just take them off the board, right? So it's like I give up three points but I can take off three black stones too. Uh, if I take off an equal number of stones, the, the, the value of the space, the territory value of the space doesn't change. And then um, since I moved them off, I can still move these stones over. Oh, and it's still our seven by eight minus two is 54 points, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, that's the trick basically for the Tawai is you can, for counting very large spaces, right? we can take off pairs of stones. So that's a very useful uh, way to simplify counting, especially captures. Um, and this is, uh, I mean, you see this all the time. I'm wondering, I'm think, trying to think of a Josaki or something that, where this is easy to count. Um, 
can't really think of one off the top of my head, but let's say we uh, capture a group or something, right? And we're like, well, I don't really know how big I don't it is to like 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 is it worth it to cap kill this? Uh, yeah, it's worth it. Okay. Well, how do I count this? Uh, let's make let's make it a bit more solid. Let's say there's a white stone here, and we uh, bump this. Well, actually, in my mind, this is very easy. Um, I'm going to draw. Imagine I'm working push here. Draw the boundary like this and like this, right? And then uh, this space, I'm just going to imagine the boundary is really like this. Um, and I could count it in pieces or something, but uh, I'm just going to take off these two and these two. And I'll just remember that there's an extra one here. So this is 4 by uh, 9. So it's 36 plus 1 is 37 points. So, oops. so that kind of helps to simplify your counting when you're counting by large spaces or if you kill something. Obviously, if you kill something, sometimes it's not a big deal, but if you're trading large uh, areas, this can be an easy way to uh, count and to adjust for that. Um, I'm trying to think of other applications. Mostly that's the big one is uh, accounting for exchanges and recognize and like kind of simplifying the board in your mind by taking off pairs. Uh, sometimes one thing you can do is you can do the opposite too, uh, although this is very rare. Um, I'm trying to think when I would use this though. Uh, when I say the opposite, you can add a white stone and add a black stone to make the boundaries easier. So for example, this upper right, if for whatever reason, uh, it's kind of, yeah, this is very rare. I can't think of an example where I've done this in a while. But the, the idea would be I add two white stones, so this is five, and I add two black stones to fill in the space here. And then having done that, I just remember that, oh, there's five points. So I just do what, move these guys all over, move these guys over, oops. And then uh, I just remember that I just count the whole space and then add five and then add one. Um, that's pretty rare. You can do that sometimes to try to like make the numbers more even. Uh, but personally, I, that's a pretty, uh, that's, that's not really used much. Um, other things that are useful, so, so first you have to know your basic shapes because sometimes even things like this, what if there's just a white stone in here? What if there's just an exchange? Uh, well, you can move stones around, but in this shape already, because I see this little bump sticking out here, um, in my mind I'm thinking, oh, just get rid of this, these two, and then it's still 10 in this space, right? So you're always reducing back to things you know, and then the Tawari is to like help simplify in your mind by uh, taking off pairs of stones to make the, the space easier to count. Um, okay, yeah, so I hope uh, this was useful for you, and thank you for watching.